Hey guys, Mike Jackness from Ecom Crew here, coming to you from the Canton Crew. We thought this would be a cool place to record a video, walking from Building C over to Buildings A and B, and just give you guys a scope of how big the Canton Fair is. Uh, walking at full speed, it takes me about five minutes to make this walk. And during this time, I wanted to give you guys some tips about the Canton Fair. As of recording this, this is about our eighth or ninth time coming to the Canton Fair, if you add up the phases we've been to. We walk about an average of seven miles a day over here when sourcing. So my first tip really is to wear the most comfortable possible shoes you have. Uh, when I first came here, I was wearing uh, nice pants and uh, nice shoes and a, a nice shirt. And I found that my feet hurt too much. I was super hot and sweaty because I'm a, a American that lives in California. Uh, I'm not really used to the humidity here and I would just sweat like crazy. So I've now uh, changed my wardrobe to tennis shoes, shorts and a uh, polo shirt. And I find that that's fine. Uh, not many people really wear shorts here. Maybe about uh, one in 10 I see wearing shorts, but it, it's not uh, too dressed down to cause a problem. I try to wear dressy shorts. The next tip is to make sure that you know what it is that you're looking for when you come to the Canton Fair. Again, this place is huge. It's the size of many, many football fields, uh, 16 halls. Each hall has at least two, if not three floors and it is super expansive. This is literally the largest uh, trade show anywhere in the world. So you wanna have an idea of what it is you're looking for. Just coming here to get inspired, to look for completely random things, most likely isn't going to work. I can tell you this because that's how we approached the Canton Fair the very first time that we came here. We really had no idea what it was we were looking for. But since then, we've developed four different brands as a reporting this that are in each one's in their own specific niche. And this way, I know exactly what it is that I'm looking for. I know that I want to be able to go to Hall 5.1, for instance, or 5.2, or whatever it might be, because it's in my niche. So that's very important to me to make sure I know what it is that I'm looking for when I come here, that I have a game plan. The more organized you are in advance, the, the better the fare is going to be for you, for sure. Now, my next tip is this roller bag that I'm rolling behind me here uh, is actually really, really helpful. Uh, it, it's, it rolls super easy on just about any surface, and it's multi-purpose. We use this for our laptop bag, normally when we're traveling and everything. But in the roller bag is going to be a bottle of water, a couple of snacks, notebooks, uh, business cards, and a place to keep all the catalogs you get. When you're going through the fair, you're gonna find that you're gonna get a ton of catalogs, and you want a place to put those and go sift through those uh, each evening when you get back to your hotel room. So let's talk about, again, about the contents in the roller bag. One of the things I mentioned was a notebook. What you'll find is that everyone here at the Canton Fair, when you give them a business card, they staple it into a notebook and they take some notes about you. And that's where I first got this idea to do this myself. So I bring my own notebook. Everyone has a stapler in their booth, so I don't have to bring a stapler with me. And I bring a box of business cards, hand them my business card. And by the way, they call those name cards here. I hand them my name card. You wanna do that with two hands. Uh, that's kind of the custom here in China. And then they'll give you their name card. I staple that in the notebook and I start taking notes. I also make a note of where they are, uh, what their booth number is. And the booth numbers are gonna be a hall number, dot floor number and then a row number and a booth number so it's comprised of that and once you learn that system it becomes pretty easy to navigate around here so I can go right back to where I was the day before if I find them to be interesting so what I find is if I go into the booth I try to be efficient as I try to take a look at the products if I like it if I feel like uh, it's something that's going to be valuable to me I will go back to the hotel that night do some research and then come back to that booth the next day to get to give them more information or to, to exchange more information so the other thing you want to do uh, is is ask them are they a factory are they a trading company this is a good thing to know and you can usually tell that by looking at their booth if they're selling tons of, of things they're probably a trading company if they're specializing in one area there's a good chance that they're a factory and I want to ask other questions like have you shipped to the United States before do you have any customers in the United States this is really important to make sure that uh, there aren't any regulations or issues that I'm not aware of uh, getting the products into the United States and it isn't just uh, if, if they say that they don't have customers in the United States I don't just stop uh, and, and move away because it could be a good opportunity but it does raise a red flag to know whether or not uh, there could be some problems that I'm not aware of uh, the only thing you want to plan for is, is your accommodations. Uh, we have another video about the Westin Hotel. There's a couple hotels that are located right here at the facility, the, the Westin, uh, the Langham. They're attached like basically directly to the building. There's another place called the Heathfront Apartment Hotel. Those are all right here 
but personally I really like to get away from here in the evenings I find that this place is a manor house there's not a lot of nightlife or, or restaurants over here and the things that are here are out of control expensive and not even all that good uh, we find that all the really great places are in, in downtown uh, Guangzhou Again, make sure you have a plan when you get here, like just kind of doing whatever is, is going to get you nowhere. Uh, you'll see that the hall that we're walking through right now is actually a hall of services connecting the, the two buildings. And again, this is the whole idea of this video is not only to give you uh, some tips uh, of what to do here at the Canton Fair, but also show you that just the gigantic scope, the enormity of this place. This is just a connector corridor. This doesn't even get you into uh, the actual booth. So we try not to record too much in there because uh, they get a little bit uh, crazy about that. Um, the other thing you want to do is obviously discuss minimum order quantities when you get into the booths. But also ask them tips like, uh, ask them how many will fit into a container uh, and how much would the price be at that point. That actually helps you seem a lot bigger than you are uh, if you aren't at that stage yet. For, for us, we actually are at that stage. We're always thinking of how many fit in a container and can I get uh, more of this item. I think that that's uh, super important. Uh, and, what, and what is the price going to be if I do order a full container, which is basically maximum efficiency? Uh, again, they'll, they'll treat you a lot differently and take you more seriously uh, doing that. Another tip is to plan your evenings and make the most of them, either by meeting other like-minded sellers. We uh, always have tons of meetups and stuff going on here, or trying to take a factory out to dinner, have them take you out to dinner. Uh, and in between the phases, you actually can go visit their factory if they're down in this region. So China is a, a country about the size of the United States. And, and basically, if you were to put uh, things geographically about how they are in the United States, I would say that Guangzhou is in, let's say, the Florida region of the United States, the southeast. Uh, and, and there's lots of factories down in this region. So uh, again, I mean, if, if you're here and you're, and you're in between phases and you don't have anything to do, try to line up some factory tours of people that you meet at the booth, go see them directly. Uh, that really helps. And also asking them that question, can I come visit you, also shows that you're more uh, serious. It also uh, allows you to know if they are actually a factory, because I typically will wig them out if you let them know uh, that you're, you're willing to come visit them. Uh, it's something that I, I find is a really good tip. I'll try to think of some other things here. Uh, the tip, the, the, the fair is open. It's starting at 9.30 in the morning. It runs till 5.30 in the evening, but don't plan on getting a lot done on the last day, the last day of the fair, uh, right around lunchtime. Uh, everyone, the only thing you're gonna really hear, it's a joke here, uh, is, is tape guns. Basically, uh, people taping up boxes and packing up their booze. They, they don't uh, run to the last second of, of the fair like they do uh, in a lot of the U.S. fairs. They're not allowed to take anything down until uh, the fair is officially closed. Here, they, they just, they wanna get out of ties. They start closing things up. But during that time is actually a really great time to pick up samples. So what you'll find is if you're in a booth and uh, they don't want to give you samples because they, they need them for other people. They have everything on display. But if you go there on the last day or you tell them you want to come back on the last day to hold a sample for you, you want to take it home, they will almost always let you do that. So again, if you write down their booth number uh, and go back on the last day, you can get samples at that time. So again, to kind of give you an idea of the, the size of this place, I wanted to walk the entire length of that corridor. I'm not sure exactly how long that was, but that time I was walking got me from Hall C over to Hall A and B. And I hope you guys found these tips valuable. You found this interesting. Uh, until the next video, guys, happy selling, and we'll talk to you then.